So let's talk about that. You, this is, listen, you've been doing this show's radio longer than me. And that's why you're better at segues than me. Because that is a perfect segue to the conversation I wanted to have about Florida State this season. I, yeah. I was, it's interesting when I was up there last week talking to some of the newcomers, talking to DJU, you realize how different this team's going to be than the one that won the ACC last year. That doesn't mean it's not going to be that good. It just means it's going to be different. And you just mentioned the schedule. Like that opener against Georgia Tech in Ireland, week mm-hmm. zero, is tough. But the, the, the start of the season beyond that, if they can win that one, they got a nice little runway. I don't think they could have asked for a better schedule setup than the one that they got. Uh, I really think that, you know, we play the, the game locally on the air. Let's guess the schedule. You know, everybody wants to know. Everybody's intrigued. Um, and we kind of laid out what I thought would happen. And I, I outside of one game, I think the, maybe the Cal game, uh, we, we pretty much nailed it. Now, admittedly on the air, I said, well, this is what would be ideal for Florida State mm-hmm. if they could get this. Because of where the buys land and because the type of competition you have before your biggest games of the year, you have really nice run-ups to all the critical matchups, the, the losable games, if you will. And I do think that coupled with the speed they've added, obviously with a bridge quarterback like DJU, I think it's reasonable for Florida State fans to believe that they absolutely have a very good shot to defend the ACC title. I bring that up because I don't think they would have believed that was possible when the season ended, given what they were going to lose, given the amount of NFL potential NFL draft picks they were going to lose. It didn't seem reasonable to project Florida State to be a 10 or 11 win team. And now I think it is reasonable. The schedule coupled with what they've brought in, which is a lot, and you're right, is a different looking team. But they have filled a ton of needs with valuable experience. And where they don't have experience, they have guys on the precipice of taking the next step or guys, in the case of many of the Alabama players, who were five-star recruits that were brought in by Nick Saban. So obviously you appreciate that evaluation. Now you get those guys who either performed well there or were on the verge of becoming starters there to enter your roster in valuable spots, running back, wide receiver, linebacker, uh, safety. Florida State did a good job of rating others' rosters, in particular Alabama. Yeah, and it's interesting. Like we saw Roy Dell Williams carrying balls for Alabama. Now he's probably looking at Justice Haynes, going, "Ah, oh, that guy's going to probably carry more than me next year, so I might need to bounce somewhere." But I mean, I'll, I'll I'll bring up a name that made that same decision at Alabama years ago, Alvin Kamara. <laughs> like he's like, "Oh, Derrick Henry's better than me. I'm leaving." So yeah. that that happens. But you know, it, it is interesting. And you mentioned you know Sean Murphy. Roy Dell, Earl Little, Terrence Ferguson. These are all guys that could come in and potentially play Malik Benson. Like you hope they can play a role. And do they have to be as, as good as their Alabama starting counterpart for FSU to win the ACC? No, they don't. They don't. And in some cases they will be and others they won't be. I don't think it matters. I think you've just raised the floor of talent considerably. This is the area, Andy, where Mike Orvell, obviously we know what a job he's done and he's been paid handsomely for it. We documented how close it was that Florida State was going to lose their head coach to Alabama. Um, As it turns out, they keep him and they sign him to a a longer deal and, and more money. One of the things that he's done, I think better than maybe everybody in college football is recognize how to best utilize the portal. And it's not just going, getting good players. Everybody can recognize the need to do that. It's guys that fit and it's guys that fit what you need in your culture. They've had really zero disruptions in that locker room, despite the influx of so many players from outside the program. And I think he, that's the balance. He figured out the need to bring in and raise the floor of talent at FSU and do it quickly while also, satisfying uh, a culture rebuild and, and and understanding how not to upset the apple cart. It's, it's really been quite uh, a deft touch. I had to tell you about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash Staples to sign up. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. College football win totals for the 2024 season just dropped. As we were talking about with Jeff, Florida State is nine and a half. You talk to Jeff, he's pretty confident they can go over. 
I think that number is in a good spot. I think that they're trying to, to make things difficult on you with that number. But I, I think that's a fun one. Uh, here's one, speaking of nine and a half, Houston is a nine and a half point favorite against Iowa State on Big Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, Monday night. Remember, we've been talking about this. We'll talk about this with James in a second. The past couple weeks, you've seen Kansas win a huge Saturday game at home and then have to turn around two days later and play against a good team on the road, and they've lost both of those. Now, this is a little bit different. Iowa State beat Texas Tech at home on Saturday. They are going to play Houston on the road. Houston is, by ranking and resume, the, the better team. The question is, will Houston cover that spread? If you want to go back and look at the Kansas-Texas Tech score from last Monday, you might feel pretty confident that the Cougars could cover that spread against the Cyclones. So maybe that's your winning $5 bet that gets you $150 in bonus bets. Visit FanDuel.com slash Staples to sign up. $150 in bonus bets, any winning $5 bet. So as the new, you know, th and this may be their only year in the new ACC, but but the, the one that intrigues me the most, the stretch that intrigues me the most, is they get Cal at home. Uh, I'm not as worried about that. Uh, Cal was pretty good last year with Jake Spavitol calling the plays. He winds up going to Baylor as the OC. Uh, so it's probably back to being a, a probably defense first Justin Wilcox team. SMU mm -hmm. in Dallas, September 28th, a week before the Clemson game. That one looks like a fun one. I think it's a great game. I, I said that was a sneaky good game. I, I, I told the, my audience that I thought if there was a, a game that you would circle as a potential upset, other than Georgia Tech, who really came on late last year and played very good football and seems to be moving in the right direction, I thought it was SMU. Um, they, they have an appetite for growing and becoming a big boy program, obviously. They've got money. They've got investment. They've got success. They've got a good coach. They had a great season a year ago, and they're hosting the game. I know that's a that's a small stadium, so we when we talk about home field advantages, you know, you don't often bring up SMU, but I imagine that that is a, a, a game that, once again, is a, a kind of jumping off spot for the, where they want to go. And so you're going to get an intensity – in that stadium that you don't often see. And I, I, I think Florida State fans are excited to travel there. Anytime you get to go to Dallas-Fort Worth or something along those lines, you're excited to do it as a road game. So, yeah, that's a sneaky good game. Yeah, Highland Park's going to be hopping that day. And then, and then Clemson the week after against DJU in Tallahassee. It's Like great. the storyline's just out the wazoo in that one. It's a, it's a fun schedule. This is a fun year upcoming, a fun team. They're, they're, it's interesting. DJU has come in and said all the right things, and you got to believe, Andy, that if he's got that great year in him, it's going to be this year. He's got weapons. He's got an offensive mind, and Mike Norvell is a coach. He really makes life easy on quarterbacks. So if he wants to see a tick up in that completion percentage, which is an area he needs to improve upon, he already throws the ball deep well. I think Florida State finally got a guy that will keep on the read option, and, and that's not a knock on Jordan Travis. They were trying to stay healthy there, but you got a big quarterback now in short yardage situations. I, I don't know how he doesn't have a very good year. I think he will. Uh, and you're right. That storyline is amazing with Clemson coming to town and DJU who has said all the right things. He doesn't seem, he hasn't, he hasn't thrown anything vitriol at Clemson's way. Uh, but, but we all know there'll be, a, there'll be a lot of emotion in that football game. And Clemson frankly needs that game because Florida state took back the ACC a year ago, won in overtime on the road against Clemson and what was an awesome game. And now, you know, Clemson's going to be, um, obviously hungry to, to prove that that was an outlier, whereas Florida State wants to prove, at least for the short term while we're in the conference, uh, that it's Florida State's conference again. Yeah, and then that at Notre Dame could be a playoff elimination because you know Notre Dame looks at that schedule and they say, okay, we open with Texas A&M. It's not the most challenging schedule as Notre Dame schedules go, but getting Florida State in November in South Bend is not, <laughs> is not going to be easy. And they're going to have to win probably both of those. I would think. And in previous years, I would have looked at the North Carolina game preceding the Notre Dame game as a problem for Florida State. I know this will upset North Carolina fans, but I don't think they're going to be very good this year. So I'm not as concerned oh, if I'm a Florida State guy about that game before the Notre Dame game as I would have been maybe, say, the last couple of years with a first-round quarterback. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Jeff – this has been fascinating, and we're probably going to be bugging you quite a bit more 
as as the weeks go by because it sounds like this is this is starting to bubble. Yeah, I think it's ramping up, Andy, and I do think there'll be more meat on the bone uh, for us in, in legally. You know, we'll have to get our legal friends together and figure out what yes. it all means. Uh, I'm forever talking to too many lawyers, uh, but but you got to find you got to find a, a kernel of information there that makes some sense that you can then use on the show. And it's fun to have those conversations, uh, like our friend Matt Baker did. So uh, I look forward to it, buddy. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate it. Yeah. Take care, Eddie. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder. Subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.